everyone. This is going to be my first attempt at a YouTube tutorial. Um, I'm going to kind of lead into my Periscope with this. So I'm going to start off with no makeup and um, then we're going to do a Periscope today for a purple eye. I'm going to do kind of a smoky purple eye. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is primer and we're going to use our face canvas primer. It's this one right here from tpfcosmetics.com and this one's the face canvas. I'm going to use one full pump. This is going to go all over the face. And what it does is it fills in fine lines, which we're getting here. Uh, it fills in large pores, which I have here. And it just helps your foundation go on really smooth. It helps it actually last a little bit longer too. Um, it is a silicone based foundation primer. Um, and ours is actually a little bit thicker than some of the other ones that I've seen on the market. So I actually like it better because it does kind of fill everything in really good. Um, I even use it on younger skin if people have um, kind of regular or dry skin. I wouldn't use it if I have really oily skin. Now I have oily skin in the T-zone, but I also want to fill in these little lines. So we're going to do that first. Um, then I'm going to take my foundation. Now I'm doing things a little bit backwards just because I'm going to do a periscope today and the periscope is going to be on eyes. So I'm going to do my foundation first, but I'm going to leave a little bit um, like around the eye area. We're going to leave that kind of undone. So I'm using Y5. That's this one right here. And that's our picture perfect foundation. When you get it, it looks very intimidating. People always think, oh my gosh, this is so thick. What am I going to do with this? But it's really not that bad. Um, because it is so thick, a little bit goes a very, very, very long way. So I'm kind of putting it on the back of my hand. I'm using our flat foundation brush, getting it on the brush kind of like that. Now what I have on the brush right here is going to do the entire half of my face. So people, um, when they first put it on their skin, they're like, this is so thick. Um, but you'll see, like I said, a tiny bit look goes a long way. This should truly last you. Like if you use this every single day, I usually say six to nine months. I have some clients that say it lasts them a year. So when you're looking at $39.95 um, for a foundation, you think, oh my goodness, I have to spend that every month. Definitely not with this one. It's going to last you a really long time. So I start in a large area of the face. We're going to do little short padding strokes. So when I first put it on, again, you think that's so thick, that's so scary, but it's going to do the entire half of my face with what we have right there. So don't let that scare you. You can see I have like these little um, little veins like right around the nose. It completely covers them. So that's pretty awesome. Go all around and I'll use like the little tip of the brush to get in there. Give coverage on the nose. Now I'm going to stay away from my eye area for right now because we're going to use a different color there. When you get to the hairline, use the brush back and forth and take the tip of the bristles right into the hairline. Um, otherwise you end up with what I call the eighth grade mask because I don't know if y'all remember but in eighth grade everyone wore like this orange cover girl liquid foundation and you could see it like right around there where everyone had their little line because they didn't blend. So any eighth graders out there watching this make sure you blend well. <laughs> Even like 40 year old women y'all make sure you blend well. So I'm going to get a little more, but you can see like that gave coverage with just what was on that brush that one time I did not redip. So I'm going to dip again, do the other half of the face and get a teeny bit more, putting that on the back of my hand. You don't have to use the back of your hand as a makeup artist. Um, I do. I just, obviously it's more sanitary. I sanitize my hands before I use them on a client and then I'll never, ever, ever dip into the product itself. Like I would never dip into this and put it on a client. But if you're just doing it on yourself, that's fine, you can. But what I also found is using it on the back of your hand, the warmth in your body actually warms up the product. It helps it go on a little bit smoother. So I like putting it on the back of my hand, even when I'm doing it on myself. Again, we're using just little pat strokes. I can use kind of the tip of the brush to get like those little spider veins on the side of the nose. Which I know lots of people have. It's a pretty common thing, so don't think if you have that, that's a big deal. Because you can cover it with picture perfect foundation. Again, little padding strokes. Notice we're not painting any houses. It's nothing like this. Everything's short padding strokes. 
when I do uh, private makeup lessons or even groups, I'll look out or have the person in front of me and I always see people like everything they're doing is sweeping. And when you sweep your makeup, I'm gonna get a teeny, teeny bit more. When you just like, when I say teeny bit, it's like that. Um, when you sweep your makeup, you're basically kind of like rubbing it off your face. So when you pat it on, you're setting it on the skin so it lasts longer and it actually goes on a little bit smoother. Okay, I think that looks good. Again, I'm just doing foundation. Um, I might do a little bit of lip and brows, but I'm gonna save the eyes for my Periscope today. So this is, again, my first YouTube tutorial, if this works out. And um, maybe I can figure out how to, um, I'm really bad at like all the editing and stuff, but maybe I can figure out how to edit my Periscope into my YouTube and have one big video. So we'll figure that one out. Um, the next color I'm going to use right now, sorry, is P2. That's this one. I'm almost out of this one. Um, it's very light, but it has a little bit of like a pinky, peachy kind of um, undertone to it. So it really counteracts um, any of like blueness or purpleness underneath the eyes. People love this. If you're watching this right now, I think it's like July 22nd and we're sold out. I'm so sorry. So otherwise I'd be doing my Periscope on highlighting and contouring and, um, but we're out of this amazing product so I don't wanna do that. So when I highlight, I start at the cheekbone, come down to the side of the nose, go up the side of the nose, and then with what's left over on the brush, I fill in under the eyes. You never wanna start like right underneath the eye right here because it's gonna be too heavy um, it's going to look thick and fake and just a little too bright. Come down the side of the nose, pat off those edges. So it's basically making like a pretty little triangle. Now everybody's face is different. And as a true makeup artist, one of my biggest pet peeves is on social media. Okay, we're also going to do the lid. I start in the center of the eye, go up to the brow, and then down to the lash line. On social media, um, it, I feel like everybody highlights their face exactly the same and they say that everybody should highlight that way and I completely disagree everybody's face is totally different and the whole purpose in highlighting and contouring is to bring out your own personal features so when I see like the highlight charts and you know you do it here and you come up right here and then you bring it out here and you know you put some here if somebody has a big chin I'm not gonna highlight their chin if somebody has a larger forehead, I'm not going to bring it up here. If someone has a long nose, there's no way I'm going to bring that highlight all the way down because all that's going to do is accentuate the features that you're trying to kind of make more subdued. So everybody should highlight and contour differently for their face. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more. And I can talk a little bit more um, later about, you know, different face shapes. We can do another tutorial on that. Um, I'm going to start again on the cheekbone because I want that to be the brightest part. Come down to the side of the nose, up the side of the nose, and then fill in underneath the eye. Go all the way up to the lash line, out onto the, there we go, sorry. Down the side of the nose, get a little bit more. I'm going to start in the center of the eye, go up to the brow bone. Again, we're doing little short padding strokes and I'm using our concealer brush. That's from tpfcosmetics.com. Little short padding strokes. And TPF is, stands for the perfect face. So when we're done, we wanna be creating the perfect face. Okay, so we have our highlight under the eyes around the eyes, um, and of course it's not blended. You can kind of see that we're not blending yet. I'm gonna use a sponge for that. I'm gonna get a little more on the same brush, but this time I'm gonna use it straight down the nose. Now, I don't want my nose to look too long. I don't want it to look too wide. So I'm gonna start right in the center in between my eyes and keep it really thin right down the center and stop it kind of right before the little ball on the tip of my nose. Good. I don't like going up here because I don't want to bring it up too much. If somebody had like a smaller forehead or really short nose, then I would bring it up, but I'm not going to do that on me. Um, I have thinner lips, so I want to make my lips look fuller. 
So I'm going to create kind of a false highlight. Make that a little bit bigger because you can see like you can see like a natural highlight right here. Well, I'm going to overline my lips later. So that natural highlight is going to go away. So we're going to create a new one. I'm also going to give a highlight right under here. And that way, kind of like that little as we mature, because I'm almost 40, um, this little line right here gets deeper and I want that to go away. So I'm going to make that come out. Brightness makes things come out at you and darkness makes things recede. So, and yes, I just told you all my age. So all of you teenagers, don't stop watching me just because I'm almost 40. Let's see. Um, we are going to go into our sponge. Sorry. Let me wet it just a little bit. Now this is our perfect blender sponge. A lot of y'all use the little egg shaped one um, and that's a great sponge too. Um, but this one I like because it's flat on one side and it's pointy in it on the other. And I just use it on me. Um, so it's not clean, I'm so sorry, but I just used it on me earlier. Um, we're gonna go in and pat out those little areas. Good. So like where the light color meets the darker color, you can see now it's just starting to fade. And then also around the nose, I just hit the sides of that line. I never go directly on top of it because then it'll make it kind of disappear. But you can see that highlights left behind. Then we can use the little tip to go right underneath the eye. And then on the lids, just pat out any little lines. Good. And then on the rest of the skin, I'll just use it to kind of create more of a skin texture so you don't end up um, looking like you have makeup sitting on top of your skin. I call this my magic maker. It just makes the skin look flawless. Good, don't forget your neck. Okay, we're gonna set with powder. Now under the eyes for right now, just because I'm doing another tutorial um, for Periscope, I am not going to set completely under my eyes just yet but we are going to, um, actually, should I set under my eyes? Maybe I should set it with like the white powder. Hmm. Let's do our fluff brush on top first. So I'm using cream puff powder, and this is this one right here. It's pretty fair. This is probably our best selling item. It's amazing. We're gonna use just a little bit on the fluff brush. That's this guy right here. Pat out any little lines that are on the lids. Just like that. Again, patting motions. Use my little sponge. And then pat out any little lines. And then press that in. Just enough to set the foundation, get rid of any shine, you, um, I never use a um, eyeshadow base. A lot of people ask me what my favorite eyeshadow base is. And our foundation is so amazing. It's like your eyeshadow base, your concealer, um, and your foundation all in one product. So you don't have to use a separate eyeshadow base. So as long as you get your P2 on there and then set it with cream puff, that makes an amazing base for your eyeshadow to set on. So I'm gonna do So we're going to take our cream puff, this is crazy, we're going to load up the brush, just like this, and we're going to go pat, 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 underneath the eye of the cheekbone, I'm going to load it up again, come straight down the side of the nose, make sure it's straight, load it up again, and go pat, pat, pat up the cheekbone, load it up again, and fill in right there. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Up the cheekbone, under the eyes. Straight down the side of the nose. Make sure your nose is straight. Get a little more. And go up the cheekbone. 
So I tap off that brush. Little more on the outside corners. And then we're going to get um, a large shadow brush. Same powder. Now anywhere where your um, cream highlighter went, I also set it with a powder highlighter. So again, this is Cream Puff Powder from tpfcosmetics.com. And then we're going to do Honey Pot. That's my powder color. That's going to go everywhere else. Use a big powder brush and really pat that in. Just like this. Make sure, again, there's no little lines. Kind of pat those out and then press that in. And then I'll go in make sure every part of my face is covered in powder. So again, this is the honey pot powder. I'm putting down the sides of the nose. Okay, we're gonna do some brows because we're gonna do our eyes later. So normally I would do 